What's going on everybody? This is Aseto the Forerunner Pony, better known to the folks, um, the OG guys, as FHRC Brony. And today I just want to go ahead and just make a follow-up video on my Traxxas Bandit. Uh, this is not a full review. I'll let you guys know that for a fact. This is just, uh, just kind of like a update-ish thing, if you might say. Um, what's going on with the Bandit so far. And spoiler alert, it's actually a great little buggy. Uh, but anyways, I want to go ahead and just want to show you guys my setup on my Traxxas Bandit. And uh, I was actually quite surprised uh, when I actually took this out on the, on the RC track. Uh, just on Monday, I believe. Yeah, Monday and uh, Saturday of last week. So this actually started off as a... It actually started life as a salvaged um, or a gutted out Rustler chassis. Because the this rust when this was originally a rustler, I actually took the chassis out and converted the parts to a stampede. So it's the one with the Traxxas Haas body on it. So since I had the the spare rustler chassis laying around in my parts spin, I was like, okay, let me go ahead and just make, rebuild this thing. So I did, and here it is, the Traxxas Bandit, and it completes my two wheel drive Traxxas lineup. That being the Bandit, obviously, the Rustler two-wheel drive, Stampy two-wheel drive, and Slash two-wheel drive. So, um, tangent over. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the setup on my Traxxas Bandit. Um, as you guys may notice, back on Monday and Saturday, when I was actually at the local RC track here in Los Angeles, by the way, OCRC Raceway in Huntington Beach, California, uh, you guys might notice that I had this thing on which is a GoPro. I'll show you guys how I mount that thing in a bit. But um, I was actually quite surprised how well this car handled around the racetrack. And I will go more in detail about it on my my final review on this thing. But I just wanna show you guys what my setup is. And um, yeah, so I, like I said, I wasn't expecting this thing to handle pretty Pretty decently, at least decently, I should say, because the Traxxas Bandit was mainly to be a basher RC buggy, not more of a race buggy, unlike the Losis and the Associateds, for example, like the RC 10B 4.1. Um, so while I was there on the racetrack, I had a, the body was pretty much all trashed after hours of, you know imperfect jumps and to the point where it doesn't really have the thing anymore on the mounting so i had to macgyver a lot of um uh, macgyver stuff by drilling holes on the on the chassis mount itself so yeah did a lot of macgyvering just to keep this body on and also that's held down by a zip tie <laughs> yeah a lot of macgyvering so my setup is not really a full-on race setup so People are going to be, actual racers are going to be looking at this like, ha, 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 ha. It looks stupid. You know, like that's like one of the worst setups that I've ever seen. But for me, as a, not a casual, I'm going to say a full-blown racer. I'm more of a casual driver when it comes to RC racing. I'm pretty much simple, actually. So with that body clip off, I want to go ahead and show you what I got inside the chassis. There you go. Like I said, I had to do a lot of MacGyvering because the parts and the part support over at the track uh, did not, didn't have all the parts I need. So I cut a piece of a Rustler uh, non-adjustable camber links. Don't worry, I'm not gonna be using the, the part because I already, first of all, I broke it already. I kind of cut it in half. I cut a piece of it and also my Rustler's running off a adjustable cam uh, uh, tie rods. So I don't need these. So I did a lot of MacGyvering actually. My The part store over there at the track did not have this part anymore. They sold out. So I decided to figure out ways to get in to get there without spending a crap load of money just to uh, get stuff fixed on this thing. So I did a lot of MacGyvering. Did a lot of to the, both the body. As you can see there's that battery mount that I MacGyvered. And I also MacGyvered the, the battery hold down. So yeah, that's what I did. 
And also, there are weights here. Uh, this thing is already gone. Yeah, it's gone. But there's there's weights there. It, it didn't really do a whole lot, and I couldn't. I wasn't able to actually get all as much weight I can I can get on the front because I'm very limited space with the banded body on it. But I was able to put some weights in there, and kind of did help with understeer because this is pretty much the weak point of the of the Traxxas Bandit, which is understeer because a lot of the weight is actually back here, whereas in the fronts not so much. So I have to kind of adjust the weight balance a little bit. Uh, just to at least get some decent um, uh, driving over there on the track. As you guys might see on the on the videos, despite the shaky camera, um, I was able to actually get around the track okay. I wasn't able to clean jumps perfectly. I'm not the best when it comes to RC jumping. But I was able to actually get around the racetrack uh, without too much understeer. So, uh, what I did is I put all four shocks... For setup wise, uh, I put all four shocks for the 100 weight shock oil and um, I adjusted the I adjusted the droop a little bit by adding some of those little shock spacers that goes on the shaft so it prevents a, a whole lot of droop as you guys can see on the front. Um, that's fully compressed and here it is off. I'm going to let go of the when I lift a buggy up, you don't see a lot of droop going on right there. Not a whole lot. I'm not expecting uh, greatness from that, but, you know, it's it's decent enough. Same thing here on the back. Let me go ahead and just um, drop this down real quick. I know I, I could edit this out, but, you know, I'm trying to do this all in one shot. So, pardon my, my trashiness right there. So... I'll put, the, I'll put the clip back on later. So on the back here also, I I installed, I added some 100 way shock oil and also put some of those shock spacers on the back. So I'm not getting a whole lot of droop even when I actually lift the car up. But you can see not a whole lot of droop. So we're good right there. Um, for the wing, you guys may remember that I had a... Um, Big Traxxas E Revo wing on it, uh, which is right here. You might wonder what the hell happened to it. Well, when I was at the carpet track at OCRC Raceway in Huntington Beach, California, it it broke the struts that hold the wing onto place, so I had to trash it, unfortunately. But also at the racetrack, I also. They had, luckily, they had one of these right here. Uh, I believe this is an associated, I think, or a Losi. I, I, I think it's an associate. I don't know. But what hap What I did was these holes are actually large enough to actually fit into the shock tower of the, of the Traxxas Bandit. Just a little bit of uh, tweaking, just a little bit of adjustment, and it's already in there just fine. And uh, I honestly think that actually looks pretty good on the Bandit, to be honest with you. Uh, I'll be straight up, I'm not, I'm not lying for that. It actually looks pretty nice on it. But I have the camera on there, so I'm gonna take it off once I'm done with this video. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much what the general setup is. Um, I also have front um, RPM uh, arms. Uh, if you guys are wondering why didn't I not upgrade the rear, because it, it it stood up pretty well. Uh, it didn't really need to um, need to change it to RPM because this thing is still holding up just fine. Uh, rear camber not adjustable. I did not. I chose not to do that. Also, non adjustable. Actually, no. These are adjustable toe and camber tie rods. So yeah. So the front pretty much is adjustable except the back, but it does. The rear do have toe, toe in, so that's good. Um, for for um, steering, I'm actually using an Amazon steering servo. Now I know that's pretty much a slow servo, but I kind of I'm not really hardcore when it comes to servos. Like I'm not I'm not the kind of guy that would get a Savox. 
if that's how you pronounce it, a Savox servo. Uh, just as long as it's a metal geared servo. And because I don't like using a servo saver because the servo saver kind of um, robs some of that steering momentum and I don't want that. So um, I wanted something with a metal servo but with a decent price. I'm trying to cheapen at least a couple of things. All right, that's all I'm trying to do as much as I can without spending a crap load of money. Don't worry about what happened to this one. This is actually um, when I had actually had a bigger server horn in here, but um, that's all long gone. But yeah, that's a Amazon. I actually bought that at Amazon. It's a, uh, it's a digital servo, actually. It's a good, that's a good thing. And yeah, that's what I did. It's a Metal Gear as well. For electronics on the back, um, I have a Valenion VXL 3S system and a TQ Traxxas uh, receiver. And also the Traxxas, stock Traxxas remote. I might have plans on changing that to a dynamite, um, dynamite ES, uh, dynamite brushless system. Because I actually do want to put a, a different body on this thing. Um, that doesn't, that's not a bandit, bandit kind of body because, uh, the motor, uh, cause the motor at, has actually has an ESC built in on that dynamite that I'm talking about. And I kind of want the buggy to have more of a sleek, more aerodynamic look to it than rather than just this one. Cause it kind of, although I do like the looks of this body, it kind of looks old school a little bit. Cause I mean, the band is technically an old school buggy. Um, I could be wrong. I could, I could make some, I could make changes on it, but we'll see. But, uh, I think what's that, I think the body I'm looking for is maybe a J Consoles body. I know some people will say that's not going to work on the Bandit because it, the, the ESC is kind of like the tall point, the highest point on when it comes to the installing a body. Um, that's why I'm, I'm planning on getting a, a dynamite ESC and brushless system because the ESC is actually integrated into the, into the motor itself. So at least it makes, um, there's less, I wouldn't say less weight, but, um, um, at least it's compact. So at least I can actually put more, a more aerodynamic body over here. So yeah, that's what it is. For the GoPro system, uh, it's a GoPro Hero 4. That's why you guys didn't, you guys noticed in the onboard videos, the camera was shaking like hell. Um, on the first part of the video, I later found out the reason why that my camera was shaking violently is was because the shock tower, original shock tower, was starting to uh, deteriorate. So over there at the pl at the uh, at the um, at the local track, I also got a RPM shock tower. Uh, which is more durable than the stock ones, and the camera is now able to actually get more. I would it's the video quality is still shaky, but it's more smooth than before. And I will be changing this camera eventually. I will be getting a um, a better GoPro, not a Hero, not the not the latest GoPro Hero, but uh, any kind of GoPro that has image stable stabilization, because that's what I'm really looking for. If you if I want to get more smooth smooth footage but this is what i have for now and this is what i get to work with for now so how i mounted my my gopro hero hero 4 onto the onto the tracks bandit is i actually used a this is actually meant to be used for the for your hat it's supposed to attach to your um, baseball cap or something like that but what i did is i drilled a couple uh, three holes when the when i originally put it on the wing i drilled three holes but in this case, I actually just used that one of the shock tower holes, which mainly hold on the bandit's case the wing or body mounts. If you have the the slash and or stampede, excuse me. And all I just did was put a screw right there and a nut right there to hold it in place. And right there, that's not coming off. That ain't flying out at all. So yeah, that's what I did. Uh, is there anything else that I that I missed? Not really. I could I could be missing something, but I'll cover that all on the on the my final review. Oh, actually, yeah. Uh, there's one more thing. Um, tires. Uh, these are the tires that I this rear tires I did not use on the on the dirt track. I was actually using uh, 
these right here. I don't know the model, but they are from, uh, what do you call this? They are from, oh, they're from Proline, okay. These tires are actually from Proline. I thought they were from Ross Speed because uh, these tires did come from Ross Speed. Oh, no, these were from Ross Speed right here. This one's right here. This is from Ross Speed, actually. This one's from Proline. I don't, I really honestly don't know the model of these tires. Um, if you guys know what the model of these tires are, uh, let me know. Here's a shot of it. So if you know what the model of these tires, let me know in the comments. But um, these actually gripped pretty well. Um, I still exhibit a little bit of understeer, even though with these Proline 4 rib on it, and even these ones, because these are mainly for clay tire or clay uh, surfaces but um it didn't understeer that bad it was it's pretty decent it was it was not terrible at all it's just um a lot of the weight was actually coming from here so i tried to counteract it um but it didn't do a whole lot but it actually did handle pretty decently over there so uh, i'll go more in detail with that when i make my final review but for now i think i said all i can say so that's pretty much my setup on my Traxxas Bandit. Um, a lot of rambling right there, but there's a lot of things that I really like to talk about on this thing. And I'll be honest with you, I love this buggy, but um, I wouldn't tell you all my full thoughts until the final review. So uh, for now, until then, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.